welcome back to Mainly Menswear. My name is Dwayne McLeod, and I'm glad you're here. Today, I'm starting a short series of videos on some simple tailoring techniques. These videos are being made as part of a presentation that I'm going to be giving to the Couture Club of Chicago here very shortly. And these videos will just involve using traditional materials and some traditional techniques that involve using a sewn-in interfacing uh, like hair canvas or HIMO. Um, these are great techniques uh, to use on any tailoring project. It could be uh, a jacket, a winter coat, a vest, any place that you want to add a bit more structure. And I think that people will enjoy working with these traditional materials as much as I do. So let's get started uh, with the first video, which will involve uh, creating a dart in a hair canvas. So hair canvas, what exactly is it? It is this stuff right here. It's also called Hymo, and it's a fabric that's woven with animal hair in the cross grain. It's usually the lighter weight ones are made, I believe, with goat hair. Um, but you will find that this fabric is very flexible, like along the straight of the grain, but cross grain, the animal hairs make this fabric impossible to crease. And that is why it's used as an interfacing in jackets and coats. And it comes in varying weights. This is a a lighter weight one. This is a, a much heavier weight one um, that would, you know, could be used in a like a winter garment or or to beef up some really lightweight fabric. Anyway, I, I thought that I would just start by um, explaining what these products are because a lot of people are unfamiliar with them. I should also add that you don't want to confuse this with another product that's called hair cloth. And this is hair cloth, and it is woven with, I believe, the hair from the mane of horses. It's very bristly along the edges, and it's also very narrow. It's only about 20 inches wide. It's quite expensive, but this stuff is impossible to, to bend. It just wants to spring right back and it's used um, in the chest piece on a jacket. Um, and because of its bristly nature, it has to be covered with flannel or another product called Domet. And we're not going to we're not going to go into that today. Um, actually, I'm going to be using this lighter weight as part of the demonstration on how to put a dart into this fabric that doesn't want to crease or bend. In this demonstration, I'm going to be working on the front piece of a vest. This is um, the Belvedere Waistcoat by Thread Theory. And I think you can see by the line drawings that, that this vest has a, a dart on, on the front. It also has darts on the back. It's quite a fitted vest. But darts on the front of a garment are quite common. Um, this is my go-to jacket pattern. It's a vintage Bill Blass, but it's not uncommon for a jacket to have like a front dart for shaping the front of a coat. This feature I also have noticed is on the Jessica blazer by uh, Closet Core Patterns, which is a very popular women's blazer pattern. So this is something that you're going to encounter in lots of tailoring projects. So I, I always make a muslin of my projects. And this is my front pattern piece um, for the Belvedere waistcoat. And using tr Swedish tracing paper has made it really easy for me to make the adjustments that I needed to make. I added an inch of length here. It was a little bit short on me. And it's also very fitted. And I found that I needed a little extra fabric on the side. So with 
um, Swedish tracing paper, it's easy to just cut the cut it and tape on some extra wherever you need it. But here you can see uh, where I've marked where the where the front darts are, and it uh, and it's going to end up here according to the pattern. So when you're working with a hair canvas and you're going to place a dart, you want to place the tip of the dart about one inch above where your pattern uh, says that the dart is going to be. So I'm going to just go ahead and mark here an inch above where the dart is going to end on my fashion fabric. On the outside, the dart is going to end up here. On the interfacing, it'll end here. And that way, the points of the dart are, are offset, and that helps eliminate any bulkiness there. Then I'm just going to mark uh, the other other points of the dart. And none of this is going to show. So you can use pencil. You can use whatever works for you. We'll unpin this and draw out the dart. And then it's a process of actually cutting out the dart from the interfacing. My dart has been marked out and I have cut out the center portion of the dart. And now we have uh, a front interfacing with a big hole in it. So how, how do we fix this? It's done with a strip of bias muslin. And what we're going to do here is bring the two edges together and uh, secure them by sewing it to the muslin. And if you're going to be doing lots of tailoring in the future, I would suggest having a lot of two inch wide bias muslin on hand. It gets used a lot in tailoring projects as a reinforcement here and there. I also use it um, in the hem of my garments. So I, I have a little stash of bias cut muslin on hand all the time and I think it's a good idea. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to take this to my machine and I am gonna close up the dart using this bias muslin almost as like a band-aid. Okay, we are in the home stretch. Um, I, I stitched this in, a, in a, some dark thread so that you could see what I did, but this is where I have sewed the muslin strip to the hair canvas. And the final step is to do a zigzag stitch across the seam. And I thought you might get a kick out of seeing me using my vintage uh, zigzag attachment on my Singer 201. So let's, uh, let's just zigzag this closed. I love using these old attachments. They're so much fun. So I will continue to zigzag this. In the end, if you want, you can come back and you can trim this muslin down. And we are done putting the dart in the front of a tailored garment. So stay tuned for the next video which I think is going to deal with uh, how to reduce bulk at the facings. Take care and happy sewing.